Now, speaking of our war crimes, this is a very important day in the history of the United States of America, but one that is probably lost in a sea of war crimes that we have engaged in over the course of the many, many years that we've been around. Uh, this is the 20-year anniversary of our shock and awe campaign that uh, is, you know, how how wonderful that we we're just talking about how like that chatter saying, you know, or it seems like Russians are like uh, just like Americans, but like maybe a little bit worse. Well, uh, maybe you can make an assessment for yourself. It's going to be really hard for you to perhaps see the victims of America's war crimes in this regard as full human beings because they aren't, you know, white. But just imagine in your mind for the sake of this argument that they're like Ukrainian children that America's doing this to and maybe it'll, I don't know, maybe you'll develop like a different perspective on the matter. On my orders, coalition forces have begun striking selected targets of military importance to undermine Saddam Hussein's ability to wage war. We welcome you back to CBS Mornings with the moment that President George W. Bush announced the U.S. had invaded Iraq back in 2003, nearly 20 years ago today. The justification at the time that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. Those weapons, of course, famously and consequentially, were never found. Wow. CBS still running defense for the American State Department is the best thing. I mean, this is the, the greatest example of that. Brother, everybody knows you lied on purpose. Why the f are you still defending them like like there was ever a real weapon of mass destruction at the time the united nations own investigative teams openly stated that there were no weapons of mass destruction found in any iraqi facility whatsoever america like very openly lied about it it's probably one of the most visible most obvious glaringly obvious fucking lies that the u.s government has ever told at the international scale there have been endless amounts of, of evidence for everybody knowing that it was a fucking lie. And yet, for some reason, you, you listen to CBS Morning 20 years later and they're like, oh, they were looking for it, but they were never found. Just fucking say it was a lie, you fucking asshole. Everybody knows. Good morning to you from Baghdad, a very different Baghdad than 20 years ago. When I first came here, people were still living in fear under Saddam Hussein. Then the invasion, the fighting, the rise and fall of... I can't watch this. I can't. This is disgusting. Oh, my God. I'm getting whiplash from watching Russia try to do, like, half as effective as, like, a like a military campaign as what America did in Iraq. Like, we watch Russian propaganda on this network all the time, right? On this channel all the time. We laugh about it because it's laughably bad. Meanwhile, this motherfucking piece of shit, this $400 haircut... Okay, with no soul, this ghoul, this demon is over here being like, yeah, people were so scared. Faustini, something we can agree on. Shock and awe with a disgusting, was a disgusting war crime and nothing close to Russians bombing Kiev. There you go. Even Faustini fucking agrees. Okay, and it doesn't, it doesn't compare. Like it literally doesn't compare. You can be the, the greatest natsec ass sucker. Okay, but you cannot fucking turn around and literally <laughs> refuse to recognize how devastating this shit was. Millions. Okay, we murdered millions of Iraqi civilians. Millions. Holy fuck. Millions before with sanctions and then millions after with direct bombing campaigns and, and, a, and a boots on the ground military invasion. We used depleted uranium munitions. Uh, we used white phosphorus. Just the absolute fucking, uh, just the absolute worst shit you can imagine. I've heard people on the right even say the government lied about weapons of mass destruction. Yes. 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 Well, it's already a fact. It's a very well-established fact, which is why I'm surprised that, like, these fucking dipshits are even... I mean, I guess I'm not surprised. They're just polishing it, you know? 20 years since shock and awe. 20 years since that night, airstrikes and cruise missiles lit up the skies over Baghdad, paving the way for U.S. ground troops to converge on the capital. In the first few weeks of the war, a group of Iraqi civilians had gathered here and began attacking the statue of Saddam Hussein. It was an event that was shown live on TV screens around the globe. A U.S. Marine unit collared the statue, yanking it until it... Bro, I'm fucking... This is so disgusting. It's so funny that Putin's in Maria Paul right now because, like, this is the same exact shit. Oh, look how they're welcoming me in Maria Paul. And the difference is there are at least some, not, this is not justifiable, but there are at least some fucking people who are like, no, I am actually pro-Russia. There's no one in Iraq that's like, I feel American. Because America is thousands of fucking miles away from Iraq. 
No one is like, oh yeah, we speak the same language. Thank God the American liberators are here. And if the Putin invasion of, of Russia, or fucking keep saying that, the Putin invasion of Ukraine is unjustifiable, which it is, it is not justifiable, then the American invasion of Iraq is definitely not justifiable. In reality, the battle of Iraq had only just begun. Saddam's removal sparked a ferocious insurgency and a bloody and prolonged sectarian conflict. We've been through a lot. We saw some things no one should see. We lived days no one should live. Ahmed Al-Jabouri was 13 years old when the country was invaded. His wife, Muja, was nine. Bro, this is so nasty. Oh, this is, every part of this is so fucking gross, dude. This is really, 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 really fucking gross shit, dude. I, I don't, oh my God, this is disgusting. Absolutely the worst level of fucking retconning. So scummy. So indecent. You are such a monster for cutting this fucking propaganda, you piece of shit, you fucking dog, coward, bitch, motherfucker. This fucking asshole. Oh, it makes my blood boil. Guys, please explain like I'm five. There is no explanation. They're doing every single thing that they always do whenever America invades a fucking country or has any kind of interest in a fucking country. They unjustifiably invaded Iraq. They knew that it was fucking bullshit. They lied to the entire international community. They went and they bombed the fuck out of Baghdad. They bombed so many parts of Iraq. They destroyed the lives of millions of Iraqi civilians. They used depleted uranium. They used white phosphorus all of which are literal war crimes. And not only that, but 20 years later, they turned around, openly recognized that it was bullshit. Bush even had the audacity to fucking say, oh man, you know, unjustifiable invasion of Iraq. I mean, Ukraine. Well, Iraq too. Like literally last year and everybody laughed about it. Highway of death was not this iteration. For those of you who don't know, highway of death was Bush senior. That's how much we fucked with Iraq. Highway of Death is not even this Bush that did what uh, you're referencing. That's the old Bush. That's Daddy Bush that did Highway of Death. That's not even considered as like a war crime, even no. though that is precisely a fucking war crime. That was a war crime so gross and so obvious on retreating forces where there were men, women, and children, okay, pregnant women and shit, that we unloaded into. The depleted uranium and its impact is still noticeable in Iraq because it has a higher rate of birth defects in Iraq to this day, 20 years later, than Vietnam, another country that we absolutely had no business being inside of that we fucking destroyed. So to look at that, this false pretense that this uh, war was justifiable and having the, the indecency to make it seem like it was an Operation Iraqi Liberation, Operation Iraqi Democracy, Iraqi Freedom... 20 years after the fact, when everybody fucking understands universally that this was completely unacceptable. The fact that you are still running defense for something that George W. Bush himself personally recognized was bullshit, it makes my blood boil. It is so gross. It's so vile. Fuck all of these animals, okay? Every single one of these media demons deserves the absolute worst punishments. I cannot in good conscience sit here and act like these people are not violent, barbarian animals that justified and defended through one of the most popular forms of fucking media, the complete evisceration of the lives of millions of Iraqi people. And that is being, like, very conservative when I describe this. This is before we get to Abu Ghraib. This is before we get to, like, wanton punishments, cruel, unusual punishments that no one should have ever been subjected to. This is before we talk about the torture. And I don't even mean the torture that they defended, that the CIA did at black sites, that uh, they considered uh, a, a form of enhanced interrogation that was proven to be ineffective regardless, but it doesn't matter because cruelty was the purpose. I'm talking straight up torture that the U.S. military engaged in. There is nothing. These men, and there are a lot of veterans in here that also participated in this, who are fucking tormented by that experience every single day of their lives. But what these people did, what we did at the behest of the military industrial complex in Iraq, at the behest of like uh, securing natural resources like we always do, what we did back then is akin to Nazi shit. If you want to understand it that way, you can understand it that way, I hope. Never forget that in the immediate invasion of Iraq, the only fucking ministry that was secured 
was the Ministry of Energy. Every other ministry was absolutely eviscerated, burned to the fucking ground, pillaged. The only ministry that was secured was the Ministry of Energy. I wonder why. Kidnappings and bombings became a daily occurrence. Like, look at the way that they're using neutrality here when they're covering it. Like, they're making it seem like Iraqi people were being uh, fucked over by other people in Iraq. That volatility in Iraq was directly caused by the United States of motherfucking America. The kidnappings were conducted by the American military. Let's be fucking real, okay? When they weren't directly doing that, when they weren't directly doing the kidnapping or murdering fucking teachers or murdering fucking babies, okay? Their instability is what created a power vacuum that created ISIS, which we played a role in, by the way. After so much bloodshed and chaos, it may take years to build that future for Iraq, but two decades after the invasion that upended this country, there is finally hope that they can. I hope CBS Morning does some news like this in Libya Street on the slave markets too. U.S. intervention good? Yeah. No, it's awesome. Charlie Daggett with monumental reporting then and now. Charlie, thank you very much. Uh, as Charlie points out, there's mm -hmm. so many seminal moments yes. from that time. First beginning with Colin Powell appearing before the U.N. Like, I think I, I would literally, I would lock these motherfuckers in a cage. Like, I'll, I'll just straight up say it. I think these guys are doing jailable shit too. Straight up. The moment that you look at Iraq 20 years later, when everyone objectively understands that it is like completely unimaginably cruel and you try to make it seem like it's like reasonable, acceptable, you take like a wishy-washy stance on it, I would throw you in jail. Straight up. If I had any kind of, if I had any kind of power, this is the world. If there was any justice in this world, you would literally jail every fucking piece of shit that is in the media, that played an active role in justifying the war, which we're going to get to, by the way. Remember, everyone's got their choice bits of vintage Iraq commentary. This one's still mine. Not sure if anything tops it. This fucking demon still writes for the New York Times. This fucking demon still writes for the New York Times. This was in May 2003. Please, please watch Thomas Friedman go uh, uh, and, and advocate for some of the most insane shit. Flying airplanes into the World Trade Center, that's okay. Wrapping yourself with dynamite and blowing up Israelis in a pizza parlor, that's okay. Because we're weak and they're strong and the weak have a different morality. Having your preachers say that's okay, that's okay. And having your press call people who do these kind of things martyrs, that's okay. And that built up as a bubble, Charlie. And 9-11 to me was the, the peak of that bubble. And what we learned on 9-11 in a gut way was that that bubble was a fundamental threat to our open society. This piece of shit writes for the New York Times still understand that these demons were never punished. You will never get punished for defending the American military apparatus. You will only get elevated to higher and higher positions in the media. This is why so many people inherently mistrust the mainstream media, okay? I cover it all the time. I have a lot of journalist friends. Uh, I, and I talk about the media biases all the fucking time, but never forget that when it comes to America's foreign policy and America's allies and America's declared nation state enemies, they will always toe the bottom line of the State Department. They will always defend capital. Always. Never forget that. And what we needed to do was go over to that part of the world, I'm afraid, and burst that bubble. Take out a very big stick um, right in the heart of, of that world show you a fucking very big stick you goddamn animal and um and burst that bubble and there was only one way to do it because part of that bubble said we've got you this bubble is actually going to level the balance of power between us and you because we don't care about life we're ready to sacrifice and all you care about are your stock options and your hummers and what they needed to see was american boys and girls going house to house from basra to baghdad um, and basically saying, which part of this sentence don't you understand? Yeah, that's what, like, 14-year-old girls uh, needed to, to understand. That, like, some fucking juiced-up freak Marine breaking their fucking door and coming in and terrifying them and maybe even killing their family members. Like, that's... They needed to know that. Why? For the crime of being born in fucking Fallujah, for the crime of being born in Baghdad, for the crime of being born in a nation that America wanted their juicy fucking natural supplies. Saddam was an awful demon in many respects, and yet America was so fucked 
that they made Saddam look good. Which, by the way, they also made Saddam in general, but that's a different point. You know, we're, we're talking, you know, uh, older American lore at that point. Objectively speaking, despite the fact that Saddam Hussein was a fucking demon, okay, in many respects, Iraq was objectively in a better place when he was manning the fucking helm before the American invasion. That's how crazy America is. Friedman's sociopathy is honestly appreciated. Uh, sociopathic honesty is appreciated. The Iraq war was about picking a vulnerable Muslim nation, one that we'd already decimated with bombs and sanctions to exert American might upon. Every lie about the WMDs in service of that impulse, it was a show of force. Anyway, I can't get a, I, I can't literally finish one fucking clip without, like, getting uh, insanely triggered. You don't think, you know, we care uh, about our open society? You think this bubble fantasy, we're just going to let it grow? Well, suck on this. I love when, like, a feet libs just show their might in the exact same way that Ben Shapiro does by basically just fucking talking about how the America... The American military machine literally bullying and eviscerating a fucking much poorer nation whose dictatorship we basically solidified, whose chemical weapons we gave him to use on the Kurdish population like that fucking, uh, like that fucking chatter was talking about, mustard gas and the like. Like Thomas Friedman gets to feel like a big man when America's doing genocidal war crimes in Iraq. You know what I mean? Like a big man. He's like, mm, yeah, suck on this fucking violent demon you vulturous monster you fucking venomous whore i hate these fucking demons i hate them so much i cannot say exactly what i want to happen to them it would be a severe almost gross but justifiable terms of service violation i will not be saying it but i'm thinking it and you can't stop me from thinking it every single one of these fucking pieces of shit are pretty much most of them are alive and well and already running around and have already moved on from the Iraq shit. That, Charlie, was what this war was about. We could have hit Saudi Arabia. It, would have, it was part of that bubble. Could have hit Pakistan. We hit Iraq because we could. That's the real truth. This was May 2003. Clip doesn't quite capture it, but they're talking about Iraq in a past tense. The question Friedman is answering is, now that the war is over and there's some difficulty with the peace, was it worth doing? This is the thread that we're going to be looking at now. Thomas Friedman in 2002, May, noting how the U.S. is lucky because we only occasionally get one-off freaks like Timothy McVeigh because Americans are just so naturally trusting of each other. Now, that's what I'd call a failure to imagine. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, look at where we're at now. For those of you too young to have lived through what happened 20 years ago, and I was certainly uh, not only not too young, but I remember it vividly as someone who would visit the United States of America Okay, frequently. I, uh, uh, this is something I'm very familiar with. This is, this is in the pocket. Okay, we're talking, I, I, I saw this, I saw this happen. I watched it from afar. I watched it from Turkey. And I certainly saw it happen in America as well whenever I visited. It's very difficult for me to talk about without getting like incredibly, uh, without violating the terms of service. Ironic because like if there was a just world, like what they're claiming, uh, what they find to be uh, totally just and normal, which is the real bloodshed. Michael Ignatieff's infamous New York Times Magazine cover story from January 2003. Ignatieff was found was founding director of Harvard Cars, uh, Harvard's Car Center for Human Rights. America's empire is not like empires of times past, built on colonies, conquests, and the white man's burden. We are no longer in the era of the United Fruit Company when American corporations needed the Marines to secure their investments overseas. The 21st century Imperium is a new invention in the annals of political science, an empire light, a global hegemony whose grace notes are free markets, human rights, and democracy enforced by the most awesome military power the world has ever known. It is the imperialism of people who remember that their country secured its independence by revolt against an empire. Yeah, that's what we did. We did the Boston Tea Party on, uh, you know, fucking Iraq. There's no, is this another one of those like fucking weirdo uh, uh, Canadians? Yeah, it is, isn't it? This is another one of those freak fuck Canadian dipshits that come over the border from Snow Mexico to the United States of America and basically take over every fucking liberal institution and try to do a more polite war crime. There is nothing I despise more. Go back to your fucking country. You have healthcare. Stop trying to further undermine the American working class's existence. Go and fucking destroy Canada. You sacre bleu, hon hon hon, baguette eating, maple syrup sucking dipshit. I hate them so much. 
I don't know if he's actually uh, Quebecois or, or not, but it doesn't matter. Sorry for the Quebecois, uh, Quebecers that took a, got caught a fucking stray there. Nothing worse than living in, in another fucking English state that still is subservient to the fucking queen and then coming to America and then, like, you know, doing more American shit. Jordan Peterson, fucking Steven Crowder, this fucking asshole, Michael Ignatieff. We reluctant hawks may disagree amongst ourselves about the most compelling logic for war, protecting America, reliving oppressed, uh, uh, relieving oppressed Iraqis, or reforming the Middle East. A civilizing force. Remember, we are the civilizing force against these brutes living in this brutal existence in Iraq. You know what I mean? We're there to civilize them. We're going to reform them. Leon Weiseltier, the literary ed editor of the New Republic, which, by the way, the New Republic is supposed to be a leftist platform, right? At that time, they were in their Tony Blair style era, I guess. But so can a liberal support this president in this war? I do not see why not. The United States, its needs and its duties is larger than any of its leaders. The war against Saddam Hussein is just, and it is truly a last resort. He just, we, there was nothing else we could have done. And Ellie Wiesel, a Holocaust survivor and Nobel Peace laureate, emerged from a meeting with President Bush last month and declared that while he is not a man of war, he supports it as a way to uh, stop Saddam Hussein. Anne-Marie Slaughter, Dean of Princeton School of Public and International Affairs. Remember, these are liberal institutions. What's up? These are just the liberals that were also like very public, very prominent, very uh, like loud liberal voices that were also championing this war from liberal outlets and liberal institutions. That guy is a goat, by the way. That guy's the goat. He's cool as fuck. The guy who uh, threw the shoe at him. Thank you. Yeah. This is from the widows and the orphans and those who were killed in Iraq. That's what he said. He's a journalist. You have to say the shoe dodge was one of the few impressive things Bush ever did. I know. I fucking hate that he's like so nimble. I actually hate that Bush dodged those shoes. It really, it really fucked me up to see a dude so fucking nimble, so quick with it. Like I hated that. You can't even let people just like experience a crumb of joy by just eating that fucking shoe directly to the face. You know what I mean? You had to also be good. I just, I hate that. <laughs> it was impressive, which sucked. Exactly. Exactly. Just so fucking annoying. Oh, Mike. Friend of the show, Mike Prisoner, also a uh, uh, veteran, yelling at uh, George W. Bush at, uh, I think that same conference where he was like, <laughs> accidentally went into Iraq, something like that. Within weeks of the September 11th attacks, the United States had occupied Afghanistan, where Al-Qaeda was based at the time, and removed the ruling Taliban from power. But very quickly after, the George W. Bush administration began selling another war. It wanted to invade Iraq. There was no link between 9-11 and Iraq, so the Bush administration began manufacturing justifications. Iraq was in league with Al-Qaeda. There are Al-Qaeda in a number of locations in Iraq. Iraqis needed saving from their dictator. Saddam Hussein's violations of human rights. Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. We don't want the smoking gun to be a mushroom plow. A focus-tested fucking sentiment to sell the Iraq War, a nation that had nothing to do with 9-11, a nation that had nothing to do with fucking Osama bin Laden, just nothing at all to be, uh, uh, you know, to the, the invasion of said nation to be sold to the American public. So good. By the way, they also lumped North Korea into the axis of evil and basically forced them to preemptively get nukes. Not only that, but Iran. Iran was America's uh, continued ally in the fight against Al-Qaeda. Okay, Iran, not really a big fan as, as uh, Shias, not really a big fan of, uh, of, of uh, Sunni fundamentalists, okay, or Sunni adjacent fundamentalists in general. They're not too fond of Al-Qaeda. Iran was added into the Axis of Evil speech that George W. Bush delivered. They, they had no interest, like they, did not, they didn't have any consideration whatsoever. They just add them in. They added them into the Axis of Evil. David Frum added Iran into the Axis of Evil speech, and Iran was like, what the fuck? What are you saying? And then we continued to, uh, we continued to rely on Iran for support uh, in, in uh, Afghanistan and even in Iraq in certain places, like literally against Al-Qaeda, even after all that. As one of the justifications for war, Bush and his officials insisted to an American public still reeling from 9-11 that Al-Qaeda and Iraq were linked. The reason I keep insisting that uh, 
there was a relationship between Iraq and Saddam and Al-Qaeda because there was a relationship between Iraq and Al-Qaeda. Like pretty much all of the Bush administration's justifications for this war, this was a lie. Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda's Osama bin Laden were both Arab men who were once allies of the United States. True! True! America, the greatest fake friends, dude. Listen, to the Kurds in the chat, remember this shit, okay? Remember, 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 remember. I know you got Northern Iraq, okay? American contractors built it for you. You feel like maybe you have, uh, for the first time ever, an opportunity to build like a fucking nation state, 35 million Kurds living in diaspora with no nation state, okay? This is my message. Look at this photo. Osama bin Laden were both Arab men. Look who at were this photograph. That's Donald Rumsfeld, dude, who played a role in fucking murdering this guy later. Do you understand? Anti-Soviet warrior puts his army on the road to peace. Ukrainians, think about this. Ukrainians are like, well, we're white. You know, maybe it's a little different. No, no, it's not different. They will go back to the Hitler understanding of fucking Slavs not being white like this. They'll go so fast, your head will spin. The moment that you have no use for the American military state, you will get dropped like a fucking... You will get dropped, dude. They will use you, abuse you, and then spit you out. They'll turn Benny Frank real quick. They'll be like, these garish, uh, swarthy Ukrainians <laughs> are not white by any means. These Slavs, you know, they'll, they'll fucking flip a script so fast. You'll be like, what? When did I not become... What am I... How did I not... I thought I was white. It's like, nope. Tapping into anger at the U.S. for invading a Muslim country, as well as the disgust at scandals like the torture at Abu Ghraib, Al-Qaeda was able to recruit and grow into something even more- It's actually not even that bad. Here, it's just Abu Ghraib. You should see this photo. I'm sure you've already seen this photo. Uh, this is not a TO. This is one of the only non-TOS uh, photos that you can see, but this is literally America literally torturing motherfuckers. I think you should see this. If you haven't seen it, you should see this. this is a famous photo. Uh, the other ones where they make them like uh, into human, naked human pyramids, uh, those are, uh, you know, terms of service violations, of, uh, obviously. Context, I haven't seen this. This was a torture prison run by the United States military called Abu Ghraib. This is where they tortured people for fun. This is, of course, different than the other kind of torture, which the CIA called enhanced interrogation. This was just torture for the sake of funsies. I, of course, if you want to know where, uh, you know, America still tortures Muslims to this day, uh, look no further than uh, the, the Cuban landmass that we have on retainer uh, as, a, as a permanent part of uh, America's, you know, uh, America's like very open black site. We have Gitmo, Guantanamo Bay. Ron DeSantis was the uh, Navy oversight uh, legal liaison on site. As we, uh, we did some torture to uh, Muslims without a fair trial at all, as a matter of fact. That one is still in operation. Oh, fuck, I remember Barack Obama ran on closing Gitmo, actually, if you guys remember that, but he never did. I wonder why. But yeah, electrocution, sexual assault, humiliation, murder, this place radicalized more Iraqis than anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Weird how, like, uh, they didn't close Guantanamo Bay. wonder why. But maybe the guy at the heart of it all saw a link between what he set in motion in Iraq in 2003 and Russia invading Ukraine in 2022. The decision of one man huh? to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. I mean, of Ukraine. Iraq, too. anyway. Uh Iraq, too. Anyway. My God. My Lord. What a self-report, dude. What a self-report that is. <laughs> Conservative estimates say that around 300,000 people were killed because of America's decision to illegally invade Iraq, although the real number is probably much higher. In Iraq today, sectarianism is rife, the economy is weak, poverty is widespread, basic services are sporadic, and the security situation is, in many places, still dangerous. Wait, that's so weird. Wait, I I'm so confused. What I saw CBS saying how fucking wonderful it was that America invaded Iraq, though. Speak American, what the fuck? Yeah, they went, and they even, well, they didn't get the Iraqi people to say that. Those words are going to be hard to, to come from uh, the mouths of Iraqi people. They basically interviewed the Iraqi people after. It was the American journalist that said those words where he said, you know, the liberation uh, took place or whatever. 
As for the West, the Americans and the British, the invaders, a lot of the world just laughs when they talk about peace or international law because of what happened here. But what matters most yep. is... That's why, to that fucking chatter, Bowies, I still remember your name, motherfucker. When you come to me and you talk about the International Criminal Court, when you talk about Vladimir Putin, and you're like, dude, oh, what? How dare you? How dare you fucking talk shit about the ICC? We have a fucking law in our country that dictates that we can fucking invade the Hague if any American service member or even family member of like uh, an American service member, I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is ever extradited to be under the legal scrutiny of the International Criminal Court. I, can, I will never forget some of the grossest pieces of footage that came out of Iraq. Like, remember when they fucking rolled a tank over that one dude's car? Like, the taxi driver's taxi? Just for no fucking reason. I wonder if they'll show it here. Oh, my Lord, dude. It's just, like, such a perfect uh, way to, to capture, like, the, the American lack of decency. The absolute barbarism demonstrated by these fucking corn-fed dickheads. It is a perfect metaphor. Exactly. They're just trying to pay for college, though? Okay, well, you know, you can suck my dick and I'll give you money to pay for college then. How about that? Get the fuck out of here, dude. Jesus Christ. I'm not going to fucking excuse that behavior ever. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, yeah, this, there, there you go. This guy's just there trying to pay for college, chat. When we arrived, we filmed these GIs after they caught a group of Iraqis stealing wood. We try to stop them from looting. They don't understand, so we'll take their car and we'll crush it. United States Army, tankers, who? That's your tax dollars, by the way. Thank you for your service, sirs. I think there's better ways to pay off college debt. That's what I'm saying. And the irony is they fucking broke the wood, too. Like, that wood's now... The wood pallets are now unusable, too. It is literally a perfect way to showcase just, like... How malicious, how awful this fucking invasion was. How barbaric these fucking pieces of shit were. Holy shit, dude. That's why a lot of people, especially people that live in like, um, especially people that live in like the third world, you know what I mean? That is like seen the, the long dick of the American might, the mighty American military have a lot of, uh, a lot of things to say. Like it's hard for them to at least even empathize with the dude who has PTSD after doing this shit, you know what I mean? Just like, it's hard. It's hard for a lot of people to to look at this and go, oh man, that's like totally valid. Uh, uh, you know, that guy was just trying to pay uh, for a college education. Half the reason why that guy can't pay for a fucking college education is because every single dollar that that guy makes is going to, uh, a chunk of it is going to go to the American, the American, uh, you know, coffers that end up sending other people that look exactly like him out there to do the same shit all over again. Um, that's what you get when you loot, said the American soldier. The American soldier said, that's what you get when you loot. Motherfucker, what are you doing in Iraq? What is your purpose for being in Iraq? What do you think you're doing on the other side of the world? You're looting. That's why you're there. That's crazy. It is literally no different than what colonizers did originally, okay? It's like identical. 